Hello viewers, Ford DIYers here with another tutorial video for everyone. In this particular video here, I'll be showing you how to replace the coolant temperature sensor for the ECU on a Toyota 3.4 liter V6. This engine is found on different Toyota models, however, this truck I am working with here today is a 2001 Tacoma. Typically, a faulty engine temperature sensor will cause an increase of fuel economy, running rich which is shown by black smoke from the tailpipe, and in a severe situation you'll have a check engine light. First ensure the engine is cold as we will be working around components which can be hot. Just to give you a peek of where the sensor is, when facing the engine, it's on the left side under the front of the fuel rail behind the timing belt cover. In order to gain access to the sensor, some components will need to be removed. Remove the spark plug wire clips. One clip on the far left side has tabs that will need to be depressed and then push it out of its location. The other clips are removed by slipping your fingers under the timing belt cover then separate the clip and push off the rear. Loosening and removing the gear clamp on the upper radiator hose. Slide the clamp back so it won't interfere with the timing belt cover. Next, using a 3H drive ratchet with a 10 millimeter deep socket, remove the bolts on the timing belt cover. Most of the bolts can be accessed with a deep socket. I have found that an extension will push the ratchet too far into the mechanical fan so I wouldn't recommend using one. For the bolt on the left side of the radiator hose, use a shallow socket. The lower bolt on the left side of the cover will have an electrical connector in the way and you can slide that out of its location. Pull the timing belt cover back. This also is a great time to inspect the condition of your timing belt. Press the tang on the one side of the electrical connector and remove from the sensor. Unfortunately, the sensor still can't have direct access with a socket. The connection between the two banks and the fuel rail needs to be removed. There will be some fuel present in the lines. You can pull the fuel pump relay, then turn the engine over to relieve some of that fuel pressure. Loosen the 17 millimeter banjo bolts using a wrench, then only remove the banjo bolt on the one sensor side. These connections will have crush washers on each side and they will need to be replaced, so four in total. Crush washers are only intended to have a single use. To remove the sensor, the one currently in the truck is a 20 millimeter and a deep socket is needed. A six inch extension can also be used. Remove the sensor, there will also be a crush washer which needs to be removed too, and the new sensor should have one installed. As you can see, here is the new sensor. Using the new sensor as an example, while I am doing a dry test, a coolant temperature sensor should be tested in hot water with specific temperatures. Based on the temperature, referring to a chart, you're able to see what the resistance rating is at a certain temperature. Another way of testing the sensor or circuit is by using a OBD2 code reader, which can monitor live data. While the vehicle is warmed up, you should see the temperature of the engine increasing. However, this test does not specifically test the sensor, but instead the whole circuit. The new sensor also has Teflon tape pre-installed. Insert the new sensor. This time around, I'm using a 19 millimeter deep socket. The torque specification for the new sensor is 14 foot pounds or 20 newton meters. Reinstall the connection on the fuel rail. Make sure those new crush washers are installed. There is two on each side of the bolt, which does need to be on both sides of the connection. Crush washers can be purchased online at the dealer, your local auto parts store, farm equipment supplier, or hydraulic supplier. The torque specifications for these bolts are 25 foot pounds or 34.3 newton meters. Reconnect the electrical connector for the sensor. Reinstall the timing belt cover with the 10 millimeter bolts. Clip the spark plug wires back into place. Reinstall the clamp on the coolant hose and tighten. Start the engine and finally check for any leaks around the sensor, fuel rail and coolant hose. If leaks are found, make adjustments as needed. New videos are released every week on my channel. Be sure to hit that thumbs up button. It's a huge help to me and leave a comment below if you found this tutorial helpful. Don't forget to follow my social media pages such as Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter to keep up to date with my latest projects. And if you're not a subscriber, be sure to also hit that subscribe button. Thank you for watching.